Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our first lesson on the ninth topic of Form 4, which is called Photoelectric Effect. As usual, let me commence by giving you the quote of the day, which states that you must do the things you think you cannot do in order for you to access new opportunities in life. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So let me start by giving you a brief history about the discovery of photoelectric effect. So photoelectric effect was discovered in 1887 by a German physicist by the name Henrik Radolf Haas. So Henrik Radolf Haas observed that when ultraviolet light shines on two metal electrodes with voltage uh, applied across them, the light changes the voltage at which sparking takes place. So this suggests that ultraviolet light can actually cause photoelectric effect. So what is this that you are calling photoelectric effect? So photoelectric is simply derived from two words. One, we have what we call photo, which simply means a light or a particle uh, of light is called a photon. Then we have electric, which is simply uh, the flow of electrons or simply uh, the current. Therefore, photoelectric effect simply will be dealing with uh, ejection or emission of electrons from a metal plate by use of light or by use of radiations of sufficient energy. Therefore, photoelectric effect in simple terms can be defined as the process of removing or ejecting electrons from the surface of a metal uh, by using electromagnetic radiation of sufficient energy. Although for this case, we shall hugely be using ultraviolet radiation, which is a type of an electromagnetic radiation. Remember we said that electromagnetic radiation are those that do not need any material medium in order for them to be transmitted. That, is, that means they can be transmitted through a vacuum. So let's start by looking at experiments uh, to demonstrate photoelectric effect. And our first experiment involves using a neutral plate. The second experiment will involve using a charged electroscope. So uh, in using neutral plates, we are going to have some neutral plates A and B. So initially the plates have no uh, charge. We have a galvanometer to show us the uh, presence of current or flow of electrons. Then of course we have our ultraviolet radiation which are going to help us to emit or to eject some of the electrons. Then of course we have um, our battery here which has the positive and the negative terminal. So initially the plates are neutral. But due to the fact that plate A is connected to the negative terminal of the battery, that means plate A will automatically be negatively charged. Then because plate B is connected to the positive terminal of the battery, automatically plate B will be positively charged. So when ultraviolet radiation energy falls on the surface of the metal plate A, so remember the metal plate A is negatively charged due to the fact that it is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. So when ultraviolet radiation, which has sufficient energy, falls on the negatively charged uh, plate A, it simply it is going to cause photoelectric emission. So the electrons within this particular plate A, which of course is negatively charged, are going to absorb that ultraviolet radiation. When they absorb the ultraviolet radiation, they are going to move to the surface of this particular plate A ready to be uh, ejected. Then of course, because we have a positively charged plate here, and we know that unlike charges will always attract each other, the negative uh, charges or the photoelectrons that have been moved to the surface of this particular plate as a result of uh, absorbing ultraviolet uh, radiations, those electrons are going to be attracted uh, by the positively charged plate B, of course, which is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. So the attraction is going to complete this particular circuit or it is going to fill this particular uh, gap here. Therefore, the circuit will be closed because the electrons will be moving from plate A towards plate B. Therefore, we'll have a continuous flow of electrons from plate A towards plate B. Then remember by convection, the direction of flow of electrons is opposite to the direction of flow of current. So as the electrons move from plate A towards plate B, the current will be moving from the positive plate towards the negative plate. 
So because the current is moving in this direction, that is why the galvanometer deflects to the left. So remember the galvan galvanometer will always deflect in the direction of the flow of current. So if the electrons are flowing from A to B, then the current must be flowing from plate B, that is from the plate which is positively charged, towards the uh, negatively charged plate. So the direction of flow of current is from, from the positive terminal towards the negative terminal, and that is why the deflection of the galvanometer is towards the left or in the direction of flow of uh, the current. So an ultraviolet radiation energy falls on the surface of the metal plate A. The galvanometer deflects uh, to the left because some electrons absorb this energy and are removed or dislodged from uh, the metal surface uh, of this particular plate A. So the electrons emitted at plate A are then attracted to plate B, of course, which is positively charged because it is connected to the positive terminal of the uh, battery, causing the current to flow from B to A. So the current flows in opposite direction to that of electrons. So if electrons are flowing from A to B, the current will be flowing from B towards A. So the current flows from B to A, hence causing the galvanometer to, to deflect to the left. So the galvanometer always deflects in the direction of the current. So when a barrier, which in this case we are using a glass plate, is introduced between the source of the ultraviolet radiation and the metal plate A, then the galvanometer shows no deflection. So the reason is because the barrier or the, gal uh, the glass plate cuts off the ultraviolet radiation, hence the circuit is open. Remember, the glass plate has the ability to absorb uh, ultraviolet radiation. So if you introduce a glass plate uh, on this path of ultraviolet radiation, the glass plate is going to block or absorb all the ultraviolet radiations, preventing them from reaching to the metal plate A. If ultraviolet radiation don't reach at metal plate A, the electrons in the metal plate A are not going to be emitted because they don't have the energy uh, that will help them help them to move to the surface so that they can be attracted by B. So if the electrons don't uh, gain the energy, they are not going to move from plate A to plate B because they are within the metal plate A. So it is the ultraviolet radiation that enables those electrons to move from uh, the metal to the surface of that particular metal so that they can be uh, lost or ejected. So if you block ultraviolet radiation, then photoelectric emission will not take place. Therefore, there will be a gap between plate A and B and the flow of current will not be complete. That is why the uh, circuit will be open. Next, we look at the second method of demonstrating photoelectric effect, and this method involves using charged electroscope. So we are going to use both positively charged electroscope and negatively charged electroscope. So we are going to place the zinc plate on the brass cap of each of these electroscope. Then we are going to irradiate uh, the zinc plate with ultraviolet radiation which causes photoelectric emission because we are using ultraviolet radiation that has sufficient uh, energy that can be absorbed by the electrons so that they move to the uh, surface ready to be ejected. So the mercury vapor lamp in this case acts as the source of our ultraviolet radiation. Remember mercury vapor lamp can produce ultraviolet radiation. So uh, when the zinc plate is irradiated with ultraviolet radiation, electrons are emitted from its surface. Remember, provided that ultraviolet radiation is of sufficient energy, the electrons are going to absorb it. Uh, the electrons within the zinc plate will absorb that ultraviolet radiation, hence move to the surface, ready to be uh, ejected. So the ultraviolet radiation helps the electrons to gain the energy so as to move to the surface of the zinc plate, ready to be ejected. So this is what we call photoelectric emission. That is when the electrons are ejected from a metal plate as a result of absorbing uh, ultraviolet radiation of sufficient uh, energy. So it is observed that the leaf divergence in the positively charged electroscope remains the same, but the question is why? So this is because photoelectrons emitted from the positively charged zinc plate do not escape due to attraction by the uh, positive charge on the uh, plate. So remember, once the electrons within this zinc plate absorb uh, the energy of the ultraviolet radiation, the electrons are going to move to the surface of the zinc plate. However, because this particular electroscope is positively charged, that simply means those positive charges are also going to go to the surface of the zinc plate. And because the photoelectrons, remember photoelectrons are negatively charged, uh, and because the zinc plate is positively charged, we are going to have the attraction. Uh, so the positively charged zinc plate is going to attract 
the photoelectrons that have been produced. Therefore, those electrons will not be ejected away from the zinc plate. So the electrons are retained. Therefore, the electroscope does not lose any electrons. Therefore, the divergence of the leaf remains the same. So remember, the divergence can only reduce if the, elect if the electroscope is losing uh, the charges. But because the electroscope is positively charged, the zinc plate will also acquire the positive charges because it is in contact with the brass cap, of course, which is connected to the uh, leaf of this particular electroscope. So the positive charges will prevent uh, the ejected uh, photoelectrons from getting lost from the zinc plate. So the attraction retains those electrons, hence the electroscope uh, does not lose any electrons. That is why the, reef di the leaf divergence uh, is going to remain the same. However, the leaf divergence or the negatively charged electroscope decreases. The reason is because photoelectrons emitted from the negatively charged zinc plate are repelled and the electroscope uh, becomes discharged. So remember, once the electrons within this particular uh, zinc plate are going to absorb the ultraviolet radiation, those electrons will move to the surface. Uh, that is, they absorb the ultraviolet radiation, hence they move to the surface of the zinc plate. But because the zinc plate in this case is connected to a negatively charged electroscope, so negatively charged electroscope will mean that these negative charges will also mean that the zinc plate, uh, the charges on the surface of the zinc plate are also negative. Therefore, the emitted electrons uh, as a result of absorbing uh, the ultraviolet radiation, those emitted electrons are going to be repelled by the electrons which were already on the surface of the zinc plate. Remember, unlike charges will repel each other. So because the electrons are being repelled, that simply means that this particular electroscope, which is negatively charged, it is losing electron. So if it is losing electron, also the charge on this particular leaf is going to reduce. So when the charges reduce, that simply means that the divergence is also going to reduce. So the key thing here is that uh, if the electroscope is negatively charged, the charges on the zinc plate will also be negative. So the photoelectrons emitted as a result of absorbing ultraviolet radiation are going to be repelled away because like charges repel each other. So the repulsion means that the electroscope and the zinc plate are all losing charges. So when charges are lost, the leaf divergence is going to reduce because remember the leaf divergence is maintained by that repulsion. However, if you are reducing the charges, the repulsion is also reducing, hence the divergence is going to reduce because the electroscope is getting discharged. Then, if a sheet of ordinary uh, glass is introduced between uh, the negatively uh, charged zinc plate and the ultraviolet source, then the leaf divergence remains the same. The reason is because ordinary glass absorbs ultraviolet radiation, hence no electron is emitted from the surface of the zinc plate, or simply put, no photoelectric emission takes place. So if you take ordinary glass uh, and put it in between the source of ultraviolet radiation and the plate, that ordinary glass is going to absorb all the ultraviolet radiation. Therefore, no ultraviolet radiation would reach the zinc plate to cause photoelectric emission or to, co to cause emission of electron. If photoelectric emission is not taking place, electrons are not getting lost, hence the leaf divergence is going to remain the same. So uh, the glass, uh, the ordinary glass prevents photoelectric emission because the electrons, uh, that is the ultraviolet radiation, it will not be absorbed by the electrons within the zinc plate. If the electrons don't absorb any ultraviolet radiation, they will not have the energy to move to the uh, surface of the zinc plate in order for them to be lost. So they remain within the zinc plate so because they are remaining within the zinc plate, therefore, it will not affect any uh, charge on this particular uh, the leaf. Therefore, no charges are getting lost, hence the divergence of the leaf will remain the same. Remember, divergence only reduces if the charges are getting lost. So ordinary glass absorbs ultraviolet radiation, hence no electron is emitted from the surface of the zinc plate. Therefore, no photoelectric emission takes place. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that you must do the things you think you cannot do in order for you to access new opportunities in life. So the quote is encouraging us to overcome our fears and take risks in life because that is the only way we can unlock our potential and encounter new opportunities in life. Remember that every twist and turn you meet in life is an opportunity to learn something new about yourself, to learn your interest, to learn your talents, 
and to set your goals and how to achieve them. Therefore, utilize the opportunities you get in life wisely because one opportunity used correctly can dramatically change your life. And lastly, recall that opportunities don't make appointments. You have to be ready when those particular opportunities arrive. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you'll get notified. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.